What's up everybody, Joe Brown here. This is the Heresy Financial and the Dallas Fed Texas Manufacturing Outlook Survey was recently released and man, does it have some good responses in it. So in this video, we are going to show why the Dallas Fed Texas Manufacturing Outlook Survey shows that business activity is tanking. It is plummeting and people are not happy about it as you might expect. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so the first thing that we need to look at here is that business activity is contracting extremely quickly. If we take a look at the numbers, we can see that the index for general business activity, which assesses broader business conditions, fell from 7.3 last month to now at negative 17.7. So it went from negative 7.3 to negative 17.7, and that is the lowest level since May of 2020. And here is what that chart looks like this one is from Zero Hedge and you can see the significant decline here recently in business activity, how we haven't been here since 2020. And also there was a brief dip down to this level back at the beginning of 2016. But for the most part, we are usually far above this line. So the big question is why? And the obvious answer is going to be things like inflation and the recession coming and asset prices crashing and interest rates making the cost of capital cost of money get more and more expensive by the day but for this video we are going to take a look at the actual survey responses from the people who took the survey here at texas manufacturing outlook survey so the first one we're going to look at here is from chemical manufacturing the comment was that business continues to be strong both in terms of sales and margins but there is uncertainty around the six to twelve month outlook now this highlights highlights something about a general inflationary environment, that there are some things that when things get too expensive, demand will just evaporate overnight because they're things that people don't really need. However, just because you have high prices doesn't mean that that will make demand evaporate for everything. In fact, that's why high prices can continue because there are some things with relatively inelastic demand that no matter what the price is up to a certain point, people will still keep buying those things and so when money gets tight people will stop paying for the things they don't need anymore and divert that money to the things they still need to buy no matter what and that will support those prices continuing to be at that high level or maybe even continue to rise from there now let's take a look at this next comment from the non-metallic mineral product manufacturing. It says inflation on raw materials, especially steel and gasoline and diesel fuel continues to damage gross margin because our contracts are longer term and fixed price. So we have no way to pass this on to our existing contracts. Now, this is a big deal because as inflation continues to move higher and higher and higher, as prices become more and more uncertain, it does a lot of damage to long-term contracts. And so if you can't trust that a long-term contract will result in profitability for both sides, right? Because a contract or a transaction is only entered into when both parties are profiting. When you give up $3 to get a burger from in and out you are profiting because you want that burger more than you want those $3. Now, it's not that that burger is intrinsically more valuable than those $3. Otherwise, if it was you would buy a million of those burgers, but it's subjective value in terms of an ordinal ranking there. So that first burger, maybe the second burger, and maybe the third burger is more valuable to you than each of those $3. But after you get to those three burgers, that fourth burger is no longer more valuable to you than the next $3 on your list. You'd rather have those $3 instead of that fourth burger. It's the same thing going on here that both parties in a contract or a transaction are only going to transact with each other if they want the other thing more than what they currently have. And to the extent that you can't predict that you will be able to use what they are giving you for what you're giving them in a profitable way, it devalues the ability or it destroys the ability to enter into long-term contracts, which hurts business activity. And any existing contracts that are currently destroying the profitability of one side means that you are stuck like them in long-term contracts who have no way to pass on those prices, those price increases, and are taking the full brunt of that pain themselves. This 
could actually put people out of business. Next, if we go to primary metal manufacturing, we see that inflation is continuing on anything that relates to oil and gas prices, which is almost everything we buy. So why is that? Why do anything related to oil and gas impact pretty much everything we buy? Well, it's because everything that we buy and sell comes and goes by truck. If we can get a truck, at any price, meaning that it's hard to even get it. If we can get it, we have to pay whatever price is available. And we're also influenced, those prices are also influenced by oil and gas. Inflation will continue until the country is self-sufficient in oil and gas. The current political policy may not change until 2024. Therefore, inflation looks like it'll be our consistent companion for a while, then stagflation. Now, it's important to remember that these are comments from respondents to the survey here. And so this comment shows that there is a lot of pessimism out there regarding regarding the current business environment. They're looking at everything and basically everything, all wealth growth is so tightly correlated to the abundance or the availability of energy. And energy is so closely tied to oil and gas that as that becomes more scarce, it's harder to get, the price is going higher, that hurts absolutely everything else down the line from there. Further, this comment from machinery manufacturing says that we see the environment for the oil industry becoming even worse than in previous months. Biden is promoting a very caustic attitude toward the oil industry, which doesn't help the country in any way. Look at the current situation that we have. We have a global shortage of energy production. Energy is not just electricity. Electricity is a small subset of all energy, energy that we use for transportation and creation of products. And so we need more energy in order to have more abundance, more wealth, but there is a shortage of energy. That is why prices for energy are going higher. So we need more abundance of energy. Despite that, there are regulations and there are political attitudes that are making it more and more difficult to produce more energy, not easier. When we need the abundance there, when we need incentives to create more, we are seeing in both attitudes politically and actual regulations that make it difficult to produce more energy, not easier. It's the exact opposite of what we need right now. And instead of trying to promote the creation of more energy, they're actively attacking and demonizing the very few people left on earth who are producing that energy that we all desperately need. Instead of demonizing those that would produce energy and also making it harder to produce more energy, instead, they should just step out of it and not promote it, not demonize it, get out of the way, and then you wouldn't have to demonize people making outsized profits and exploiting people because there'd be new competition entering into the space, creating more energy, creating more abundance of energy for everybody and creating more fair pricing and creating competition to bring down those profit margins. So get out of the way and the free market will take care of it itself. If we look at this next comment about computer and electronic product manufacturing, they said that we are starting to see things cooling across all markets except auto. The first area was handset personal computers. Now it's spreading to other markets. Things haven't rolled over, but expedites have stopped and in quarter orders have slowed to a trickle. There are clear signs of early cooling beginning, but autos continue to be strong, even though there are definite signs of significant component build within their supply chain. Now, part of this could be due to the crypto crash and a much lower demand for semiconductors, for chips, for graphics cards, things like that for mining cryptocurrencies. You're seeing a big demand collapse from that area, which leaves more available for other industries. Under transportation equipment manufacturing, we see that you can't ignore the economic fundamentals leading to a likely recession. The administration is either stubborn or paralyzed as deer in the headlights, and the Fed is slow to react, will hit the brakes harder than they should have had to. Now, this highlights something that I've talked about on countless videos that the Federal Reserve uses data and numbers and information that is extremely slow, lags behind what's happening in real time, and it's backwards looking. Then they process it through models that are 
number one outdated and number two just don't work because they're based on false or flawed assumptions about how the economy works. And so that is why the Federal Reserve usually does overcorrect one way or the other. That's why when things in March of 2020 start to collapse, the overcorrection is causing the highest inflation that we've seen in 40 years. And now that inflation has gotten out of control, they're overcorrecting the other way and they are going to cause a much harder crash again compared to what would have happened if they would have just stayed out of it in the beginning, let the bad companies fail, let the pain happen in 2020, let the chips fall where they would, we'd be much better off right now. But instead, they tried to save us from the crash, cause the biggest inflation in 40 years, and now we are getting the crash we would have had back then regardless, but we also have the inflation along with it. Nobody's better off as a result of them meddling in economic affairs and thinking that they control a complex system from the top down with their fine-tuned tools, which is really just a sledgehammer on the economy while it was also transferring a ton of wealth from savers to borrowers and spenders. Which brings us to the last comment here under miscellaneous. Government overspending and transfer programs have inflated the money supply while resulting in unchecked corruption and waste. We will be paying that bill for generations and what a colossal waste of resources and missed opportunity. I could not have said that better myself. That is exactly what happens. When you print money, when you spend money into existence, when you loan money into existence and spend it, that money only has purchasing power as a percent of the existing supply of money. And so when you increase the money supply by, let's say, double, let's say you were to double it, that means the general result will be that the total purchasing power of all the existing money will go down by half because you don't increase wealth, you don't increase the goods and services in existence by just creating more money. All you do is you change what is necessary to measure it. And if before it took all the money to buy all the stuff and then you double all the money, it still takes all the money to buy all the stuff, which means that now it takes two for every one that it used to take. The problem is it tricks people into a false wealth effect, thinking that there is more savings, more capital, more resources than there really are. And so people go out and spend as if the times are good and they think they're gonna get rich and then the bust happens because the bust is inevitable because the boom was created as a false effect of the creation of money out of thin air. And it is almost certainly true because there's no free lunch that we will be paying this bill for generations as it will take years and decades to rebuild the wealth necessary to pay back all the spending and the wasting of resources, the misallocation of resources, and the malinvestments resulting in the destruction of wealth that were all caused based off of this printing of money, firing up the printing press like we haven't done in this country probably ever, unless you go back all the way to the continental. There are plenty more comments if you'd like to read all of them yourself. I'll have the link to this survey in the description below. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.